I'm Bill Singleton and uh, today I thought I'd bring you into the studio, to my studio, and show you some of the supplies and tools that I use uh, pretty much on a daily basis. So uh, I've been painting for probably close to 50 years and I'm still learning. I, I still I try new and different supplies and tools all the time. So, but this is what I'm using now. Uh, about six months ago I had discovered uh, acrylic wash. Uh, so I've been using that a lot lately. Uh, pretty good stuff. I've used acrylic for like 45 years probably and I've used gouache for about five years. This is sort of halfway in between, sort of got the best of both worlds and uh, I'll be doing some videos on acrylic gouache and how to use it in some of the techniques uh, later on. Uh, this setup here, uh, this is for acrylic gouache but it's 90% the same whether I'm using acrylic or oils. Pretty similar setup. Uh, one thing you can't be without, paper towels. Use a lot of those. Um, the paper I've been using lately, especially I'm doing a lot of uh, journaling and natural science stuff, is uh, the Strathmore mixed media paper. And I uh, love this stuff, it works great. It, uh, I don't use, I don't work really super wet, so uh, this stuff is fine. Uh, if you're doing straight up watercolor, this may not be uh, good enough for you. It may warp a little bit, but I don't, I don't find any warping at all the way I work. So this is tone gray. This is like six by eight inch. Uh, there's white ones. And they also have the larger sizes. These are uh, nine by 12 size. They have gray, uh, white, and tan. And I uh, also use watercolor paper. This is Canson's watercolor paper. Works great. Sometimes I work on, uh, especially if I'm doing stuff to sell and stuff, I'll work on gesso board, which is uh, really useful. So, like, there's an illustration on that. And my palette, what I've been using lately is um, I've got a metal clipboard that I uh, I have been I get. This Reynolds freezer paper, just cheap, and uh, I just wrap it around here, clip it on, cut it, clip it on, and then uh, these little clips work great. <clears throat> and I have uh, pill bottles that I've just glued a, uh, glue a magnet to, clip on. I use the big one for washing out my brushes, and then I usually keep a smaller one here for just dipping in for water. Every once in a while, you need to just wet your brush a little bit to to mix in. So it's pretty handy. Uh, you don't need a, a metal clipboard. You can just get a regular, like out in the field, I have another clipboard. And if, as long as you have these kind of clips here, these work great. These uh, magnets stick to them very well. And uh, if you don't want to do the Reynolds paper, you can get, you can get ready-made uh, disposable palette paper. <laughs> I use disposable stuff, especially when I'm doing gouache, because if you're starting a new, well, you want to throw it away at the end of the painting because if you start a new painting, you don't want your old colors to mix in uh, accidentally with, with the new stuff you're doing. So usually use disposable stuff on that. <clears throat> so the squash sometimes dries out. I, I live in Tucson, so it's pretty hot sometimes. So here's a little spray bottle I got at Target. Works pretty good for to spray your palette, keep your paints a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to get them too wet, but it keeps it from drying out. Uh, and then some, this one's really good too. This is actually the best of all. I use this one more in the studio. The little one I'll take out in the field with me more. Uh, brushes. I pretty much have a, a assortment of brushes, different sizes and tips. And uh, Lately for the uh, acrylic gouache, I use a lot of the round brushes. But I also have big flat ones for large areas. Uh, my favorites are the Escoda. Brushes are really good brushes, but, uh, and then there's these travel ones too that open up pretty good, pretty handy. Um, but even the cheap ones from Michaels or, or Amazon work pretty good most of the time. So, first set up. <laughs> Lately I've just been drawing most of my stuff with these, uh, just a Pilot G2 seven millimeter lead mechanical pencil. Works great, no sharpening. And uh, so that's some of the supplies. Some of the tools I use, well, one of the main ones lately is my iPad. Uh, back in the old days when I was doing illustration stuff, we'd have to, you know, get a photo, print it up, 
black and white, or if you print in color, it's usually kind of crappy and expensive, and had to work for those. So now with the iPad, the color is pretty much dead on all the time. And the thing I really like about the iPad is if I need to zoom in on an area to focus on it, you're right there. So pretty much I found this to be one of my most indispensable tools now. Some of the other stuff I use to find handy is uh, this little hand wrist. Uh, it's really good for setting up over your artwork, resting your hand on it so you don't smudge what's underneath. So works really good. You can move it back and forth. There's different lengths, different sizes. It's cool that it's clear. Pretty handy to have. Uh, one thing I found that's really indispensable is a mirror. And I have a big mirror across from me that I use a lot, but this one is good to, to hold up to to artwork. And when you see your artwork in reverse, you notice a lot of things that you don't see as you're working on it because you're used to seeing it from a certain angle. So uh, using the mirror just gives you a totally fresh point of view. So mirror is indispensable, I found. And for uh, working with natural science stuff, if you're drawing a lot of nature stuff, uh, these little armature things, I forget what they're called, are really handy with uh, adjustable little alligator clips and magnifying glass. So you can set that down and do really detailed renderings. And if uh, that magnifying glass isn't uh, strong enough, I've got a bigger one here that's fully adjustable. And this one's cheap, I think it's only $8. And this one even has like an LED light on it. So it's pretty good, set it up configure it any way you want for your painting. And sometimes you want a magnifying glass, but sometimes when you're looking at your artwork, uh, a lot of artists will step back a few feet or maybe 10 feet to, to see what their artwork looks like. It kind of comes together differently. You see things a little differently. Well, I've got a small studio, so I can't really do that. So I have a reducing lens. Reducing lens is basically the opposite of a magnifying glass. Uh, so I can go to my artwork and hold it up to it and it's about the same as walking back about 10 feet. So very useful to have. So those are a few of my supplies and tools and uh, hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll see you next time. Thanks.